Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ashley Roach, and uh, I am with Cisco DevNet. Uh, we're our developer relations program in, uh, in Cisco. And uh, what I want to talk to you today about is more kind of an exploration uh, from my point of view on like what the heck from an app dev standpoint does infrastructure, like how is it relevant to me at all? Because I would say, I'll admit, like we're at least, I'll just speak for myself, let's say, as opposed to Cisco as a broad thing. You know, it's like, okay, people perceive us as a networking company and only a networking company because we do a really good job at marketing ourselves that way. But we have tons of other capabilities. But even still, even at that infrastructure level, um, we can actually provide some value, I think, even all the way up to the stack for application developers. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. I've, I've written some code to try to explain this and explore it uh, on my own. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of get to it. So, you know, as a community, like, why do we care about application developers? Um, obviously, in DevOps, we, they're part of the community, so we need to care about them. But also, you know, they are heavy influencers today. If you've ever read this book, um, the, who's, who's read The New Kingmakers? Oh, really? Uh, I recommend you read it. Uh, it's a very interesting take on the influence and power of uh, application and software developers across the, across the globe um, and in the industry. But uh, the thing is, when, when we think about uh, applications as application developers, we're like, hey, I just want something that runs, it's up, I don't care whatsoever about anything below my application. And um, you know, the move towards cloud is setting new expectations, I think, for infrastructure companies like us. Um, and so those of us here, we've all used uh, a lot of these kind of capabilities, uh, like the presentation that preceded uh, with um, cloud formation and so on. You can declare things and boom. There's already there's infrastructure ready for you. So application developers have gotten used to this. Um, but as we've seen also, cloud can be a little bit expensive. So you know, we, you know, we sort of co do competition, but also cooperate with cloud providers. And so we want to provide kind of affordable solutions for, um, for your enterprises or applications in these different environments. So, um, you know, obviously, this DevOps model, right, uh, developers uh, and infrastructure, um, is, is really kind of what I've already talked about. The application developers aren't really thinking so much about the infrastructure. They don't care about it uh, necessarily at all. And um, however, I think when we start thinking about things like observability, uh, which is kind of a, uh, it's a bit of a buzzword that's starting up these days. Um, we think, I think there's some value in what the infrastructure can bring for an application itself. And so I borrowed this uh, slide from Cindy. Um, I cannot pronounce her last name, so I'll leave it there. But uh, she did a really excellent uh, couple of articles, which I've linked to below, but also at the end of the presentation if you want to read them. Like, OK, the death of Dev, uh, the death of ops is greatly exaggerated, right, is the topic of this one. And so um, this is kind of the perspective maybe from a non-DevOps organization. You have your developers, uh, they're writing their code and maybe doing some docs, and then everything else gets crammed over into ops. Um, and so like, I'm thinking about this as I'm, I'm pondering my uh, my scenario here at Cisco, and uh, so I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually pretty funny. If you look at Silicon Valley, uh, Silicon Valley, you have this DevOps relationship like that, where literally the devs think they're the, the bee's knees, but at the end of the day, you know, there's Guilfoyle, who's in the background um, causing trouble, but also um, making sure everything is up running servers in his garage or in their garage that are you know, better than anything you can get in the cloud, for example. So you know, even though uh, developers want to say infrastructure is irrelevant, um, you know, serverless is not actually serverless. You know, it depends on servers, as we all know. 
Um, and so one of, one of actually my, my friends and colleagues uh, wrote this kind of, I think, quip uh, on Twitter, which is, you can abstract all you want, uh, but at the most basic level, it, it all sits on a box with a processor, memory storage, a network port, and a bus to connect it all. Hardware matters, hashtag hardware failure hurts. And um, so this is where we get into, obviously, the things that we know about with monitoring. And so monitoring is something that, you know, now there are vendors that are kind of looking at this problem space and saying, hey, monitoring's fine, but you can monitor too much, so it doesn't actually do anything um, because you just get overloaded with the information. Um, and so what they're trying to look at is this concept of observability, which is providing more context around uh, failure conditions. And so the context being, hey, at a certain point after the failure condition, I need to debug my app. And I really want to debug my app in production uh, because it's really hard to reproduce some of these uh, issues in a cloud scale kind of scenario. Um, and so this is also borrowing somewhat, uh, borrowing from Cindy's, uh, one of Cindy's blog posts. So my, my kind of proposal here is uh, how to get sort of dev and ops working together is Maybe we can say, look, infrastructure has a ton of APIs. Uh, app devs love APIs. Maybe this is our common language that we can use to talk together. Um, and that doesn't mean in meetings you have to do uh, you know, actual restful conversations, which would be an interesting thing to, to try out. Um, but so I was thinking about this, and like maybe there's, this actually works out. Um, and so putting myself back in the shoes of an application developer, an application developer, they're like, hey, my applications have all these problems that, that you know, I wish I could get some visibility into infrastructure. Um, and so like, kind of looking at this scenario, uh, I wrote an enterprise app, it's working, and now I'm seeing this behavior in the app, and my manager's you know, pounding on me, or pager duties pounding on me, um, what's going on? So we're losing inventory transactions, and I need to debug this thing. So how do, how do we actually do this debugging? So if you're an app dev, you probably don't have that much access to anything below um, maybe even the browser, or if you have a rich app, something like that, logs from there. Um, so maybe I have the opportunity to go to some centralized logging report repository. Um, those can be challenging if you don't have traceability information. Um, you have things like in the browser, JavaScript console logging, um, Postman to hit the API, maybe an internal status page. Um, and of course, you see if you can reproduce it internally or locally. Um, but at the end, it tends to end up in this situation, <laughs> right? So it's all your fault. Um, you, know, you, need to, uh, you need to fix it. So what if we could actually use that infrastructure then as part of this observability uh, concept and get to this point of something like the devs do more than uh, just write code, um, but some of this common infrastructure, databases, networks, you know, and Kubernetes or whatever, these things become more blended, um, which you know, is probably music to your ears. Uh, you guys all feel this way already, um, preaching to the choir. So, um, so what I want to do is maybe take a quick look at, uh, we could look at some code, and, uh, and I'll run a th a through a demo of this project that I created to give, um, you know, kind of give this perspective. I'd be interested after this, like, we can have some conversation about, you know, is this ridiculous, is it interesting, um, and so on. So I look forward, think about questions. Don't try to stump me. I'm not an expert on all layers of everything. Uh, but hopefully, as a community, we can, uh, can kind of answer some of this stuff together. Uh, okay, how does that look? That looks really small, um, which I imagine is going to pose some difficulties for folks. And I have no idea in IntelliJ how to zoom this thing in. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom it um, using my Mac. OK, so let me give you some context around this project. So there's two projects here. One is this thing I called um, uh, InfraCheck. <laughs> That's what it's called, InfraCheck. And um, InfraCheck is just a library that 
um, does HTTP requests to infrastructure APIs. So in my case, in this example, I'm using um, a network controller that we, uh, that we created um, called APIC-EM. And uh, what that does is it kind of gives you this overall visibility into your network infrastructure. So this concept isn't, it's not anything Cisco specific. I'm not trying to like pitch you on this particular thing. It's just, that's what I have to test out um, on hand and, um, and so on. So just that caveat. And then secondly, I have this app, which is a Spring, Spring Boot app. Uh, I'm not really a big Java person, but um, I, was, uh, I was convinced about Spring Boot once it, I actually was managed to get it up and running in like five minutes, which configuring Spring apps uh, before was like, wow. Um, but one of my friends uh, who is a very, he's like a religious zealot about Spring, he was, um, he was like, you got to do this this way, and da 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 So I was like, cool, help me out. Um, but basically, the cool thing with Spring Boot is you can uh, enable these actuators, I think is what they're called. And so they're just extra add-ons which allow you to um, create things like health checks automatically. So it creates this infrastructure where you can do debugging. You get a lot of information about a running app. So I was like, oh, that's cool. That kind of fits into this mentality that I'm, I'm trying to um, try out. And so all that's going on here, it's very simple. Uh, web app is it'll, you know, it'll run. It's going to you know, instantiate the, the library when an HTTP request comes in. And um, it will go and make the request to the back end system and then get the response. And then finally, um, do some processing like, OK, if the status is failed, then you know, dump an error to the um, to the, the browser. OK, so that's, is any questions about how that is all laid out? No? OK. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run it. And uh, I will zoom in maybe down here. So it's doing its fancy zooming. Let's go down here. OK, so I have just this web server. It's running on port 8080. Might even be able to zoom it more. Um, and I'm going to hop out if I can oh. <laughs> to my browser. So this stuff's on GitHub. I'll, I'll show you those links in a little while, more detail. But if I go to localhost uh, just 8080 slash health um, and run it, then hop back over here, it's going back here. And this is running against one of our sandbox. So that's why I have password in clear. It's not. Uh, it's, it's already published in labs and all that stuff. So don't feel like uh, you need to point that out to me. Uh, okay, so we have a, a returning result from APIC-EM. and we come back here, and it says, you know, the status is down. Uh, it gives us um, this information. So what this does is, in this infrastructure, it can run what's called a path trace. So it's a little bit like trace route. Um, but it can take a, um, a destination and an origin in your network, and it can validate whether it's open. You can actually have that running, you know, like on a cron job, essentially, as well. Um, but let's imagine it's going from like your firewall to your app server. You can maybe uh, imagine that path, and it's going and it's uh, it's pinging this. So maybe your infrastructure monitoring or your observability stuff is hitting that um, that health endpoint. And it's going deeper down into your environment to then discover um, this, this status of your network. Um, so so that's, that's kind of the demo. Um, and what I will do next is a couple things, which is just to point out uh, this stuff is open source. So if it's interesting to you enough, you can check it out and happy to extend it and, and whatnot. And then. Uh, these are the resources. I did share the, um, the resources with our, uh, our hosts, so we can, um, we can actually check that stuff out later. But let's see, in conclusion, like, I think it's true. Application developers don't really want to care about infrastructure. Um, but there is this opportunity for them to work with ops to make their application uptime and experience, I think, better to leverage this stuff. 
um, we can talk together via APIs, right? Say, hey, our infrastructure has APIs. Developers, what can you do to like make the uptime of our app so much better? Um, and so finally, you know, use the infrastructure, Luke. OK. So open for questions, comments, um, observations. Did the cookie coma occur? There's one make you go all the way in the back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that I mean, I think from from a DevOps point of view, I would think you would have to have that enabled piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, in fact. Um, so interestingly, um, you know, just in our experience in DevNet, so DevNet um, started about four years ago at Cisco. And at that time, uh, it was still early days as far as like providing APIs to, um, to, uh, to our customers. And so one of the big things we've done is we've done a ton of enablement of like our sales engineers. I mean, in our case, we're not, we're not running like production stuff in our case. So for us, it's like educate our sales engineers, which might be like a proxy for the ops in some ways, um, around, hey, software skills, understand how to do this stuff. And we run like three-day workshop events around our bigger events like Cisco Live. Um, and we've we've done stuff all over with that, so absolutely, I think that enablement um, and sort of reskilling is sometimes used as a term for that, is is a key part of it. I think because not having that skill is going to make it hard for ops to say, hey, look, this stuff is relevant to you. This infrastructure, um, it has these characteristics that I know you are interested in that we see in the industry. And so, hey, let's work together to, to actually build something that's really effective for our organization. Does that answer your question? OK, great. Okay, yeah. So, so that was supposed to be a joke that we we're not in person having REST API conversations, but it's a good question. <laughs> um, so apparently, my joke was, boo. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, uh, okay. So now that I've said that, I've forgotten your question. Um, good design. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So again, like when ag the DevNet. You know, I don't want to overstate like DevNet's kind of like importance or whatever at Cisco, but um, we, when I was hired on DevNet, uh, I was hired as an API architect, and so I was supposed to be helping the company, broadly speaking, um, move to a better API design standards and so on. So um, it's a journey. Right, uh, especially with a company that's 25 years old at the point where, like, I think I joined to have that kind of that kind of role. Um, but we're doing a lot of work actually now that we're four years in, as we've gotten a lot more mo momentum and buy-in to create. Um, we have a new version of like our API style guide that we're creating. So that's you know that's something that's helpful that we can give to business units. Um, th those are the ones that create products. Uh, and say, hey, you're wanting to design an API. Hey, these are the things that we see as common, you know, useful things. So 
how you do API versioning, you know, this different semantics. Um, we actually are doing currently like workshops with, um, you know, kind of hand-picked groups within the, the B the, or the BUs as well in order to help that transformation. So those units that want to be helped are the ones that we like helping. Uh, and we feel like getting people to success in those groups then kind of encourages others later, as opposed to starting with, say, the hardest one uh, and trying to convince them of you know, different pra best practices and so on. Um, the final thing that we're, 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 I've only got an outline for it is a design playbook. So this is how to think kind of soup to nuts around developers. Um, and for us, developers is broad. It's not, uh, it's not only application developers. It's developers like you know the gentleman back there mentioned. We consider sort of infrastructure developers as a persona for our, our capabilities. And so being able to provide this playbook that's like, hey, who is a developer in your business unit? Um, think about developers you know, and the APIs as the GUI right, for the experience for, uh, for them as opposed to like, oh, there's this stuff and we'll add it on later. Um, and it just goes through all of the kind of life cycle around API design. So yeah, as you can tell, we do, um, I went yappy on that one because uh, we, do, we do encourage that and we try to do a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Well, so what do you guys think? Like one, one of my criticisms, self-criticisms of this is, would you ever include this in an application uh, itself, or do you want to keep that separation of concerns outside of the app uh, from the infrastructure? Yeah. So I, in that case, it's like, hey, I'm I'm the I'm the application developer. I see this error, and obviously, you wouldn't do it in the browser. You'd you'd, you'd stash it somewhere or whatever. But um, in do you want you want to do that? It's not hitting the infrastructure directly. It's hitting like a controller, so it's it's at least abstracted from the uh, you know the network itself. You're not changing configuration and so on. Um, but that's one thing I kind of worry with this model. But I'm I'm curious to see if folks have um, any comments on that. This gentleman. Oh, sorry, this scholar. <laughs> yeah. I think you got it, yeah. You can put it like right up there, even though the germs. <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. One one comment I had in one of I've done this once before. It was at uh, Cisco Live, um, and I did actually. I'm curious. Show of hands, who hears infrastructure and application? Okay, so reasonable split. Um, when I did it at Cisco Live, it was all hands for um, infrastructure and one application developer. So I was like, oh my god, yay, an application developer, and. Um, what was cool was um, the application developer was like, "I have a comment," and uh, I was like, "Okay, cool. W what am I gonna What am I gonna receive here?" But he said, "Look, this is actually really useful for me because um, now I can take some like actionable information and send it to the the ops or the network folks and tell them, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is the error,' um, and then vice versa, like the 
ops guy was like, yeah, I would love to get data like actual useful data from apps as opposed to them going like, it's not working, it's broken, your stuff's all broken. So that was kind of an interesting, uh, I think, exchange. Uh, I don't know how, how if that resonates with folks here or not as well, but maybe you can achieve some of that through some of those intermediate layers too, right? Yeah. Got it. I think gentleman back there has a comment. Or Boyd, do you want to say something? <laughs> Sure, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not really proposing this as like uh, the the solution. It's more like, hey, how do we, how can we, yeah, how can we get? Cool. Nice. Okay. Any comments or questions from this side of the room? No. Quiet folks over there, falling asleep. No. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Boyd will come get you. All right, we don't have to use the whole whatever exact time up or anything like that. If there's no, if, are there any other questions? Oh, zero time. So there you go. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, again, this was kind of an experiment, so I, I, I love the feedback. If you want to talk about it another time in the halls or whatever, happy to be um, the sounding board and vice versa. So really appreciate it. Thanks.